Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 146. That's right, folks. If you add all those numbers together, you get a bigger number. Joining me this week, for the first time since the last time he was here, it is Jake Terrio. I thought you were going to roll into some sort of numerology joke where we could start some conspiracy theory about our podcast. Speaking of lighting Bibles on fire, Ian Gibson's here as well. Yeah, just uh, 14 words to resurrect 666, the ways of Satan. That's right. We're going to be talking all about those numbers in today's episode 146. <laughs> uh, the devil is in us all. Folks, uh, Four we're here to talk minus about... one is three, <laughs> and three sixes. <laughs> this is, this oh is just becoming like, like that guy from the rehearsal who just does this constantly. He's, I'm going 55 miles per hour. That's his Bible quote. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. <laughs> I mean, shut the fuck up. All the, all the license plates in the Matrix are Bible verses. Is that oh, true? Oh boy. Yes. Well, are they, bi- are they specifically Bible verses, or did they... Do it. Is it? Is there a Bible they're verse? very specific. The Wachowskis <laughs> chose specific Bible verses. <laughs> no, okay. there should be a I'm Bible verse for every that. numerical combination. <laughs> no, no, I it's think like, there is. It's like John, it's not John three sixteen, but it's like the alphabet and then numbers, so you know. I think that's how all there. license plates are, or most of them. <laughs> <laughs> the U.S. government. What about that separation of church and state? <laughs> That's not real. Well, it's not I was, real. I thought about saying my That's uh, liberal propaganda. <laughs> yeah, some churches are separated. Yeah, others get special attention. Others get to see the parents every other weekend. Um, <laughs> folks, we're here in the chit chat section. That's where we chit and chat. Um, I just wanted to bring up a very funny thing. Is I had a. Uh, Halloween get together uh, last weekend, and uh, we were playing Jackbox. And Tom, my coworker, was here, uh, and he was like, "Oh, can we play Faking It, which is the like lying game that you have to yeah. do in person? Like, I'm never able to stream it. Can we do Faking It in person and like play it?" And we're like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." So basic rules of faking it is one person's the faker. When the the prompt is revealed, that's the first time they're hearing it. So like if they said like, how many eggs do you eat in a day? And they put up 10, like they just know they have to put up a number of fingers. So you'd be like, you eat 10 eggs every day? And like sort of that weird thing. So anyways, uh, Tom's girlfriend, <laughs> one of them comes up and it's like, oh, hold up the number of fingers of what you do in the bathroom. And she holds up a three. And we're all like, oh, you're the faker, you're the faker. And we voted. And it was like a majority, but it didn't go through. And Chris is there and he's like, oh, yeah, I think you need a majority. And we're like, what are you talking about? Like to this, to her. Yeah. It's like, what's number three? And she's like, oh, it's, I, it's, I blow my nose is number three. And all this stuff. We're like, what are oh, you talking about? No. So, also, so next round, how many, how many rolls of toilet paper do you use in a, in a week, average week? And she says 10. <laughs> we lose it. We're like, what are you talking about? All this sort of stuff. So we all vote on her, and it still says she's not the faker, or the faker's still at large. And it turns out the faker the whole time was Chris saying, no, you need a majority. Oh my god. And this woman, <laughs> we lost it. Tom was, like, fake screaming at her. Like, he's like, 10 is half of the amount we get at Costco, like, every two weeks. How could you <laughs> use 10 in a week? And then, because uh, the number three thing, her. we were like, we were like, oh, I, like, I can see you thinking yeah, a number three. it's a regional like, thing. <laughs> no, yeah, no, if you do both at the same time in one bathroom visit, yeah, I like, call sure, that a number three. Sure. You know? Yeah. Oh, it was <clears throat> probably the hardest I've I ever laughed in a long time. We we may play that at Extra Life just because you're right. It, it really does need to be in person for yeah. best, and we've never done it in person. So yeah, we should play. Maybe that. good opportunity for us. Um, and of course, like I, I just forget how great some of those classics are. Uh, in Jackbox, they they're really Fibbage is always great. Uh, yeah, all that sort of stuff. I'm excited for the new pack. That TKO two looks pretty good. And then I watched a video <laughs> of next lander playing the other games and there was like the the one i was down on the most was probably the the musical one because it's just was like it didn't feel like uh-huh. a good jackbox game like to play with people um yeah but all, all the other games seem pretty good in 10 so oh, 
down bad, not down good. Oh, down, down bad, yeah. Down the down. bad spectrum. I was down on it. I wasn't down, gotcha. but not down bad because I think I think down bad is good. Yeah. No, you're down. If you're down bad, that's bad. Isn't down bad just like you're too you're too eager? I thought down bad was like, dude, you were down bad, like you're horny. Like, not always horny, yeah, but like think, you're down bad. Dude, you're like, you're just like looking at pictures of squirrels so, and jerking off. Like, that's so down. So, bad. taking it back, one of the new Jackbox games made you horny? Yeah, I, well, I said down. You said down bad. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what either of you are talking about. <laughs> It's it, it. We had this in Discord when Skibbity came up, and everybody. It, this was in the save data Discord because they paged me, and somebody had posted some screenshot or something of Skibbity, and they were like, "What is this? Is this something for Roblox?" And they were like, "Ian Gibson, get over here! What is this?" And I was like, "Look, I need. Do I need to explain Skibbity to you, idiots?" And and in that moment, I realized I was by far the oldest person in that fucking Discord. It's a nursery man. <laughs> and I was explaining hit popular like. Not even millennial, like what is it now? Like Gen Z or something memes to them Zoomer, from man, Roblox. The Zoomers. Zoomers, yeah. And and it was like how it it's it's a kind of a condemnation of me being too online and y'all for not being online enough. And that's a bad place to be for everybody. Yeah. That's an awful place to be. Um uh, but speaking of needing toilet paper, uh someone wrote FNAF here, uh, which only ever makes me angry when I see that. <laughs> Um, so which one yeah. of you degenerates watched this movie? It wasn't me. That was me. I went to Chuck E. Cheese for five oh. nights of fun with Freddy Fazbear. Um, yeah, I watched the Five Nights at Freddy's movie because uh, because I already have Peacock. Uh, for some reason, I was rooting for this movie. I have no idea why. I think it's because leading up to it, it felt like they were trying to be genuine to the IP and not just cashing in on it, which I think is a valid thing. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting emotional. And uh, so I watched the movie. And the other thing was, I was Maggie's been trying to watch horror movies lately. And I was like, I don't want to do any of that. And then she got home on Friday and I was like, let's watch a horror movie tonight. She was like, great. And then I was like, hey, now you have to watch a video game movie. Anyways, I watched Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. Uh, it It definitely... I don't want to go into it too much, but it's one of those things where it's like if you're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, I'm sure you would absolutely love that. I think there was a bit of a, a tone mismatch because this game, this movie's rated PG-13. It's trying to be a scary movie. It's trying to be a horror movie. But it's deliberately pulling its punches because I think it knows that a majority of its audience is under the age of 13 you know <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like we're technically a pg-13 movie we're blumhouse so we're gonna we're gonna pretend like it's a horror movie but if you happen to take your 10 year old child to this movie because they really want to see it you're not gonna you're not gonna feel like a bad parent because there's actually not a lot of like jump scares and like crazy stuff going on um and so i think it's it, it actually did a pretty good job when we think about all the all the fucking video game adaptations that have been happening lately from like Halo to the Mario movie to Last of Us, etc. This one, I think, falls on the side of good because it is very faithful to its fan base, which, again, is people under the age of 13 of a certain brand of humor. And they played into that. And they had like a mid credit scene that people were freaking out about and stuff. So it's like if you're not into that. It's probably not worth watching. It's, it's a shame because it actually had some really good ideas, but it's execution just like not good editing. And it just kept like skipping over things. Yeah, go ahead, Jake. I see you got a I question. question. Cause Hazel and I, we also have a subscription to Peacock and we're like, Oh, five nights, at Freddy's. We watch horror movies like all through the month of October. And, um, we're like, let's take a look at it. But the runtime was over 90 minutes and she and I both were not, we we are very hesitant of of yeah. films of that, that nature that are over ninety minutes. Did it feel long? Honestly, no. It okay. felt it felt shorter than its runtime. I think it's like one forty six or one fifty hour fifty, and it it honestly felt like ninety minutes. Like it moves. Uh, it's not breakneck, but it 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 feels like perfectly paced. Cool. Um, and I, I think my biggest to it. Yeah, I, I think my biggest complaint though is that the way that it unrolled the story and the plot points 
like something fucking crazy would happen. Like some plot point would be revealed or some piece of information. And there was not enough time or reaction to that plot point. There was not enough of I'm not saying that all movies need this, but something fucking crazy would happen. And instead of the people being like, what? And then like turning to each other and being like, what? And then being like, what the fuck just happened? It was more like like two seconds of like, huh? And then the next scene is them being like, OK, so that happened. Just taking that as fact. Now let's move on. <laughs> and it's just like there's like creepy fucking supernatural stuff going on. And it's it's pretty good ideas. I don't know how how close it is to the plot of the of the game, but like the ideas that were happening and like, you, you know, I'll give you a little tease. This comes out in like the first five, ten minutes. The main character is keeps one of his problems is that he has this recurring dream about a traumatic event from his childhood. And so he he like takes sleeping pills because like basically every time he goes to sleep, he has a recurring fucking dream of reliving this traumatic event from his childhood. And it's like, yeah, cool idea. When he takes the job as a security guard at Five Nights at Freddy's. The dream starts to change and these little kids start showing up and he realizes they're the little kids that were like killed or disappeared 20 years ago and the reason why freddy's closed and so he just like his recurring dream starts changing because he's sleeping at freddy's overnight and it's just like okay that's fucking weird like it starts exploring these really cool ideas does not do enough depth of those ideas does not give enough breathing room or reaction for those ideas to grow which is a shame that's probably my biggest problem it feels like a solid six out of ten overall it's much higher if you're Five Nights at Freddy's fan. It's not terrible. It's got some interesting ideas, but overall, the execution is OK. That's probably yeah, it. I have an, a, an additional query because I'm also always pretty hesitant to watch a PG-13 horror movie because I feel like it's not going to no satisfy my my more perverse interests. Yeah. Is it still like it's I'm it's not grisly at all, I'm imagining. But. Um, no, I mean, it, it, there are moments of brief grisliness. Um, I, I think you could potentially enjoy it, Jake, not love it, but find some enjoyment in it. Because again, it comes down to it. It introduces some pretty wonky, weird, messed how up crazy, ideas. How crazy is Matthew Lillard's performance? It's very good. It's not that crazy because he's not in it a whole lot, but it's very good. Okay. He's very good in it. I was waiting well. for you to say, it's not crazy because he's not in it. <laughs> Like Jake had somehow <laughs> thought he was in it. No, it's it's definitely like I would say if you're if you're at least interested in it, at least start watching it. Worst case, you turn that shit off. Question: uh, Best video game movie of the year? What came out? Didn't Super Mario come out this year? Super Mario is better than this. Interesting. I think that's it. Is there anything else that came out this year? Other than Last of Us, but that's not a movie. TV show, you know. I was I'm just gonna media. fucking say it. I think I think the Mario movie is better than the Last of Us TV show. I can't follow <laughs> you there. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. A lot of that is personal enjoyment because that Last of Us TV show was a lot of up and downs. <laughs> can't follow you there. Um, that's for I, five nights of fun at Chuck E. Cheese. What was Charles it? Five nights at. at it was Five, five Nights, nights of, fun. of Fun. Five oh, Nights of fun. of fun at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, not Chuck affiliated Cheese. with Phenomenal. the movie. <laughs> Honestly, if Chuck E. Cheese just embraced it, they'd get a lot of adults. Just switch to like the barcade model and make it horror themed. you get a lot of adults, probably. But then they'd just, like be, a fucking... just be having sex in the ball pit. But that's what I was saying. Like, that would be a fucking nightmare to run one of those joints because you're basically like, hey, come on in. We're going to scare you. We're going to drink you. We're going to eat you or you can do whatever the fuck you want in this space. And it's you like, cocaine? oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. The customers are doing whatever the fuck they want in here. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Just Westworld. But Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, <clears throat> finally, the uh, the. Uh, point I wanted to hit here in the chit chat section. My eyes are broken. Um, they no longer function. They are destroyed. I, Ian knows this because I bought a new TV, but I've been annoyed with video games for a while because I feel like they're always blurry. And specifically when I'm moving the camera. So like yeah. when I'm standing still and spinning the camera, 
everything gets blurry all the way around and it like annoys the fuck out of me. Part of this is ghosting, which is an issue TVs and things can have. The other issue is, I believe it's, is it TAA or anti-aliasing? Yeah. Um, yeah. That is a separate issue that I have since uh, having this issue in my life. I also now hate like when characters walk past walls and like shadow color changes and like all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That's just a separate issue that I hate about video games. Um, but thirdly, so I was like having issues with Spider-Man 2. I was like, every time I feel like it's getting blurry and everything. So then I went and double checked. Uh, God, what was the game? I don't remember. There was another game I was playing. And oh, World of Warcraft. I was playing World of Warcraft on my computer. And I spun around the camera. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's weird. It's blurry there, too. I like don't remember it being blurry. And then last night, I started a new game of Ocarina of Time. And sure enough, spin the camera and everything's blurry. So I think... <sighs> what? Was I right? Is your TV broken? No, I, no, this were on three separate things. I think it's just my eyeballs. So what I've, what I've come to discover is what I think it is, is I think the refresh rates are so high on the TVs that the stutter of like spinning a camera just looks more blurry than if it was like a 30 frame rate, you know, and the refresh rate was different. Um, yeah. Because yeah. of the judder on TVs, like, and if it was a plasma, I probably wouldn't notice it. But um, I basically came to the conclusion that I've just ghost or gaslit myself into thinking video games shouldn't look the way I think they're looking. Because it got to the point where I was just watching TV and being like, is there ghosting there? Is that blurry? And I'd be like, no, it's not. It's fine. You just have to <laughs> like yeah. unlearn this weird uh, thing that's happening. So I won't be complaining uh, about yeah. blurry video games for a while. I, th I think part of it could also be anytime you're probably like me, anytime you touch a piece of tech, you then super scrutinize it for a while. So yeah. I just swapped out my sound bar. And now every time I use my TV several times per content, I go, is the audio out of sync? Is it like five yep. milliseconds off? I'm, I don't need to adjust it. I'm like, ah, uh, you know, so that's probably yeah. what it is. But I, I do think you're right. Cause you're, you hate motion blur. I've, I've come to be okay with it. I do think part of it is a lot of modern games do add motion blur post processing. And I know that because for the games that have like a motion blur setting, you turn it off and you get that old school PC FPS feel where there's no motion blur at all when you turn. So there's a lot of games by default that are adding that as a stylistic choice. I don't think it's all the ones you said, yeah. but it's definitely more prevalent nowadays. And I, yeah, I think that's also the issue. Like, I wonder if I went into the World of Warcraft settings, I could turn off that. I turned off motion blur in Spider-Man and I was still seeing it. But like, I also get the weird issue where like, um, it's just like fast movement and stuff. I feel like it's almost like duplicating a frame. And I like have convinced myself of this. And that's I, like, ghosting. So, yeah. but it's not actually doing it. I just keep thinking it's doing it and conflating like, regular motion with uh with that sort of because i've watched footage of other people playing spider-man on my like computer and stuff and it's there as well but what about what about on your specific tv because it does feel like there's a tv setting somewhere fucking with you yeah i mean i could get, <clears throat> could get rid of it i like i was watching star trek and i turned on true motion and of course it gets rid of all of that and i go like I kind of understand why people like true motion now because there's zero yeah. judder at all. There's no, any of the things I've complained about. And I'm like, yep. I could watch TV like this maybe. But the problem is yeah. like game mode and stuff on my TV. You're, you're not allowed to put like de judder stuff on. Um, so yep. it's like the trade off, but yeah, sometimes I think I've done everything I can and yet something is still wrong. But I need to, when yeah. I come to, down to Extra Life, I'm going to boot something up and be like, okay, this is what it's doing. I have to see if it does it on Ian's TV so I can curse <laughs> you. you. Realize. <laughs> and, then, and then now that I've now that I've calmed down about OLEDs, you're going to make me get all upset again because you're going to realize <laughs> you're doing shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going to point something out. Just, just one anecdote there. That doesn't remind me. I remember a couple of months ago listening to the Jeff Gersman podcast, and he said he, he somehow his daughter had gotten the remote to his tv and was was dicking around with it and then accidentally turned on motion smoothing and he was too lazy to turn it off and and he said 
he didn't realize. Long story short, the TV, it was an LG OLED and it was playing Peppa Pig at like 120 hertz motion smoothing 4K. And he was like, guys, it looked really fucking good. <laughs> like, I don't like motions, really, but it looked really, really good. And I was like, it's probably like 3D movies where 3D movies don't work if they're live action. But if it's a cartoon or animated, then it just works so much better. So I could totally see a case for motion smoothing for specific types of content. Yeah. Uh, I also like discovered some there were some issues with like whether or not a game does HDR well and how much that plays into the image. Fucking HDR, um, man. Yeah. Fucking HDR. Uh, um I ended up turning uh HDR off in Alan Wake 2 uh because my TV simply refused to under like no no there was no communication between the console and the TV and I was like I'm just yeah. going to regular. I like I don't care. <laughs> My my problem now, just to continue, it's my problem now is my new soundbar. One of the reasons why I bought it is it supports Dolby Atmos, which Dolby Atmos, the the layman's explanation is basically like Dolby Surround and 7.1, etc. is all horizontal. So you're basically just adding more speakers in a horizontal plane around you. But Dolby Atmos is all about positional audio. So it's like completely different tech where you can have audio above you to the right, to the left, etc. Yeah. Well, no, it's like it's <laughs> going to go by that. It's three dimensional, basically. And um, even though I only have a 2.1, it does work pretty well. But the problem now is a lot of stuff is piping Dolby Atmos, whether it's actually Dolby Atmos or not. And my old TV, that's enough of a strain on the TV that I've had some apps crash and I can't run Dolby Atmos with the Xbox Series X plus game mode plus hdr like it's too much for the tv to handle so it's one of those things where like you're talking about with hdr it's like it's like well fuck now i have to pick between which of the bleeding edge techs i can do because my stuff is just old enough that it can't really fully support all of it so now i'm like fiddling with it more it sounds a lot better soundbar soundbar is fucking amazing but i have to fiddle with it more now and it's like that's that's the problem with with you know, embracing tech like we do is you're never you're never quite going to be happy and everything is never going to quite work perfectly. Everything sucks. Are you doing uh, optical or eARC Bluetooth? <laughs> you um, you can't do uh, Atmos over optical, so I have to do HDMI. And the problem is my TV does not. The reason why. I'm, the, OK, so <laughs> so. Oh, God, <laughs> this for most content. It's TV HDMI out to the sound bar. So that works great for all my smart TV stuff. And that's fine. Um, but if I want to watch a 4K Blu-ray with Dolby Atmos, it goes in my Xbox. And the best way to do that is to do the Xbox into the sound bar and then the sound bar HDMI eARC back oh. into the TV. But that's where I have the problems because my TV via HDMI eARC doesn't support all the full things. Like my TV when I bought it didn't even support Dolby Atmos. It got that as a software update later. So the so it's it's yeah, it's one of those things where all of a sudden it's like when HDMI came out and it's like my TV's HDMI, my set box is HDMI, but I have to go I can't do 1080i, I have to do 1080p, you know? Like you're having to fucking fiddle with the modes too much. So the tech's great. It just needs to get to a point where it's fucking standard across everything yeah. and it works perfectly. I can't wait to complain when I get down there. It's okay, I'll be, I'll be right there with you. Just be like, man, this sounds like <laughs> shit, Ian. <laughs> like, where'd you get the sound bar? I will say, okay, one fun <laughs> story here was my old sound bar had like a crackle at a very specific tone. Maggie couldn't hear it, but I could hear it maybe once a minute. And I was like, sound bar's 10 once years old. Fuck minute. it, time for a new sound bar. Well, you'd be listening to something and somebody would say something in a tone and you would hear it like, like crackle, you know? And it was like, no, I get nope. it. That is such an us Can't problem. Can't fucking do it. Like, I love the fact that yeah. Maggie didn't hear it at all. It's like anytime I point out things to Karen, be like, that's wrong with that. And she'd be like, yeah. why did you have to say that? Like, I'm so yeah. sorry. So then, so I was like, I was like, this, this soundbar is 10 years old. I bought it for $150 10 years ago. And I was like, it is past time. And now I have a legitimate reason to upgrade, which is this crackle. And, uh, and so I was like, fuck it. And so I spent $700 on the soundbar because I was like, fuck it. Let me get a nice fucking soundbar. 
and I got this sound bar and I plug it in, I start listening to it. And I'm like, it definitely sounds better, but I don't know if it's $700 sounds better. Right. And then I was like, OK, fuck it. And I threw in uh, Saving Private Ryan, the 4K Blu-ray I have, which has Dolby Atmos and folks fucking worth it. And I'll tell you and I'll tell you why not. Not just because like like you're actually getting like pretty good positional audio. So you're hearing like artillery like off your shoulder and stuff in the distance. But there is this moment. Uh, in the movie where you probably remember they're in a church, it's at night and there's like these candles flickering and stuff and they're having conversation and it's like raining outside. And um, one of my cats got on the coffee table and started fucking with this piece of paper. Or so I thought because I heard the paper crinkling and I looked down because it was coming like from the coffee table. I was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, oh, and I looked up and there was a candle in the foreground of the shot and they had placed the sound of the audio like in the foreground, oh. like not just out of the front speaker, but it felt like it was coming from your lap. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. So when it that works, which is it's a little rare that it works really well. And somebody's done like the the artistry to make the Dolby Atmos track good. But when it's there, it's fucking great. That reminds me not to continue this train, uh, but it's like when I saw the only 3D movie I ever thought really did a really good job was Gravity, because mm -hmm. in the 3D scenes, yeah. you were, like, in the helmet. Like, like they would do mm. the audio like that, and you saw the, like, bubble come out. And there were a couple other scenes they, like, super nailed with it. But I saw maybe, like, five or six 3D films, and all of them felt like the glasses 3D yeah. gimmick, red and blue, versus the Gravity one felt like it brought you into the, like, environments. Oh yeah, but well, it's, it was and in post production and, for like four years. Yeah, yeah. That, they, I, right. they, yeah, they also helped that they nailed everything about it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the simplistic uh, cinematography not as a detriment, but that helps with 3D because you have somebody in the foreground and just emptiness behind them with something far in the distance for yeah. a lot of the shots. And like Academy space award winning sounds. cinematography. Yeah, and like like space sounds. Not that they're easy, but like it's like the the audio, the, yeah. that specific like radio. All that stuff. So super fun. Uh, that's gonna be it for the chit chat section. Sorry for chitting and chatting so so long, or shitting. We could have been shitting. So pay your time back. Um, sorry, I'm gonna burp because I'm drinking seltzer. Uh, Jake Terrio, you haven't spoken in a while. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would like you to speak about uh, Alan Wake. Yeah, yeah. I uh, knowing that the second one. Well, it's out now, but knowing that it was about to come out. I um I had never actually played original flavor Alan Wake. The only remedy game I'd played until this point was Control, which I loved. Um but uh yeah, played Alan Wake. I thought it was delightful. Um it was gameplay wise ends up being kind of repetitive towards the end. Um but certainly that Sam Lake knows how to weave a story together. Um and I thought it was pretty audacious that you could find like manuscript pages that explicitly tell you what's about to happen in like yes. 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I'm like, that's pretty cool. It, it's, it shows a lot of confidence in your story that you're like giving away key events before they actually happen. Um, I'm excited for the second one. I actually, I couldn't remember then in the like, uh, discourse surrounding control. I can't remember if people were surprised to discover that it was connected to Alan Wake. Cause I think they mention like Cauldron Lake and some of the documents you can find. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there was the DLC that was explicitly uh, Alan Wake themed, but playing through Alan Wake, I was, I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, this feels a lot like, like just texturally, it all feels like it's, it makes sense that these universes are connected. Um, and so I don't know had I played this first and then played control second, if I would have been playing control and been like, I wonder if this is connected to Alan Wake. Um, I mean, excited for the second one. I haven't started it yet. Um, so no spoilies, William. I, I won't. Uh, but as someone who played Alan Wake, uh, like 2013, uh, and then played control, it was very much like, when control they were like showing all the stuff off you're just like oh i wonder if they'll connect it back to alan wake and then the other mm -hmm. parts of it was like oh i wonder if like this is they'll keep doing like this direction 
or that because mm-hmm. dra- like with that knowledge um and also just being both games yeah and just being annoying that they weren't making alan wake too um mm. but yeah alan wake i also replayed it um or i replayed it this past month and then kyle played it through it too we were talking a little bit about it um that game is just it's like it's like you said it's good it's very 2010 uh, Mm -hmm. like extremely 2010 but i think the like narrative weaves uh as someone who like i like sort of grasp basically what it was doing when i first played it but this time playing through it and like actually paying attention to it uh you're just like wow that is uh pretty well done uh Mm -hmm. and all and all all in all and barry with his lights wrapped around him is the best part of that game. Anyways. I thought the uh uh I think uh, a good moment also was the uh the the poets of the fall segment or their you know their in universe band at Old Gods of Asgard. Yeah. Um cuz I thought the ashtray maze was the best part of control. <laughs> um so I'm excited to see what what their part in Alan Wake 2 is. Um, Ooh, yeah, I forgot about them. They're um I think I I didn't play the DLCs this time around, but I think they're in one of the DLCs. For Control? For Alan Wake. Um, uh, I can't remember which one, though. Because um, I, I yeah. remember them being having a larger presence, and then when I replayed the game, I was like, oh, they didn't have that big of a... The concert part's pretty great, though. Yeah. I liked it. Very good. Uh, w- would you like to talk about your next game? Oh, Je Sens. Je Sens. Which I, I thought to myself as like the, the the first menu screen came up, I'm like, I wonder if it is if it's a, the, an actual French word, and it is. <gasps> um, so it's for a a retreating tide is the French word for a retreating tide. Um, I'm only about an hour into this, but so far it's pretty interesting. The traversal feels good for basically the only gameplay is climbing. <laughs> um, but it feels good. It doesn't feel like uh uh it's not so like on railsy as like the climbing in like like Horizon Zero Dawn or something. Um it definitely you definitely feel like you have a bit more agency about how and where you're climbing even though there are certain like puzzly I guess kind of sections where you have to like do things in a specific order or like trigger things to open up a pathway. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'm in, I just, just before hopping on here, I got to the beginning of chapter three. I don't know how many chapters there are. I don't know how tall the mountain is, um, but um, it's fun so far. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no mountain high enough. Uh, who we'll made... see if there is a mountain high enough. It's made by someone, right? Don't nod. Don't. Uh, that's what it is. I couldn't remember. Don't nod. Don't nod. Take your head. What's, uh, the, I'm what's gonna... the meaning behind that? Behind that name? I don't. I don't get it. You're only allowed to sh- shake your head. Yeah. Don't nod, Ian. Just. Uh... You know, I just realized I. Don't nod is such a terrible name that that's probably the reason why I have like latent animosity towards their games and don't want to play their games what's the that's worst how bad that studio name is named game studio this it's would be an interesting of the best do you think don't not is the worst worst no it's my top think, right now <clears throat> i think that game studio is the worst named game studio that game company that game, studio? That game company sorry that's what i meant I don't know, man. That's that's so stupid. It's kind of funny. No. Or what's that stupid one that everyone made fun of? Kind of that... funny is <laughs> kind of funny is bad. <laughs> the um, the Darth. The, that's no moon. I thought that was a kind of a. Oh. Oh. Kyle and I know someone who works there. Like oh, oh, oh all power to him. I just don't think it's a great name. <laughs> and also, they should they should get laid off. They work there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> read the room read the room um i'm gonna talk about alan wake 2 briefly uh let's get straight into the spoilers listen you are murdered immediately in this game and the whole thing is a dream you find out in the first no i'm kidding uh so alan wake 2 uh you start up the game as another character 
not Alan Wake will call her uh, because she's a woman and we don't deserve to say her name. No. Saga Anderson, uh, you're an FBI agent driving up to Bright Falls to investigate. Uh, the FBI and, the, and all the PR stuff, right? Yes. You are there to investigate a, uh, a mur- series of murders, I believe. And then as soon as you get there, there's another murder like on your right, on your drive up. So you stop off where the murder is happening. Uh, there's an intro sequence that leads up to this, but I'm not going to talk about any of that because it's kind of cool. Uh, and, uh, you were there with your, uh, co-agent partner, uh, who is usually the lead, but in this case, they gave you the lead. Uh, they are Alex Casey. Uh, people will recognize the name as being the main character from Alan Wake's books. Um, however, this is not the main character of Alan Wake's books. As far as I can tell, it is just a person named Alex Casey because Alex Casey books and movies exist in the game. Uh, because you find Alex Casey lunchboxes, which is pretty great. Um, uh, Alex Casey is modeled after Sam Lake, the head writer. Is he also the game director mm-hmm. of Alan uh, Wake 2? I don't know. He's Max I don't know. Payne. He wasn't he's the Max game Payne. director on Control. Michael Kasernan was the game director. Yeah, so yeah. I know he's like lead writer. Um, he is the model. The voice is Max Payne. Uh, and so it is just literally Max Payne. Um, so anyways, you like do all this uh, investigating stuff. You go into town and everything. Um, the cool stuff so far, because I, I won't get into any story bits. Uh, you have a mind palace called the Mind Place, uh, oh. which for her, I believe, is it's just one of the rooms from the lodge they're staying in. But she like created her own mind palace. You have a filing cabinet with all your cases. Every piece of ed- evidence gets a photograph. You hang them up into s- specific spots. Um I haven't gotten to this, but I believe at some point you can like rearrange your conclusions and play out scenes with evidence and stuff in like different places. But for right now, it's like they even have for like the lunch boxes you find in these caches, they have their own case file where you can like tack up the ones you found. Um, it's really neat so far. The, the, they, uh, so you do, you have this case board in the mine palace or place. You have your map there. You, that's where you go to upgrade your guns. So it's literally a room you're walking around, or you can navigate it through menus. Um, the dream. There's like a prof, profiling uh, space where she'll like go and like. It's not quite Sherlock Holmes. Not like the investigative stuff where it's like I see a raindrop. The underside of your shoes aren't wet. Uh, that sort of thing. It's more like uh, I said, racially profiling, psychologically profiling. That'd be wild. It's, it's <laughs> frenetics. Yeah. <laughs> psychologically profiling people, being like, "Oh, she looks like she's not telling me something. Let me ask about, like, guess if this is what the sort of thing is." Uh, not guess, but uh, Jesus Christ. Um, and I think that aspect's really cool. It's the cork board and everything. And then finally, I, there's been a little bit of it, but there's like, there's been some like Federal Bureau of Control references. Like you'll see something or something else and you're just like, oh, like give it to me. Like I want this, like please. And part of you is just like, I'm so excited uh, to like figure out I'd like more of eat more of that. It's like being at the dinner table and you've been waiting for your meal for like an hour, which is Alan Wake 2 but they just also put down more of those red lobster cheddar biscuits. And you're like, I, li- I could also eat those too. So you're just like, you want uh-huh. more control, but you've been waiting for Alan Wake too for so long. Uh, so they, they really, um, I want my cake and I want to eat it as well as my prime rib. So please let me do what's that. The, uh, what's the, what's uh, the tentative, a tentative goatee contender? Uh, I'm definitely, I played maybe an hour and a half and I will definitely add it to the game of the year list. Um, it is, it is nowhere on the list so far other than like, I've watched the first episode of a TV show and I'm like, if the rest of the season is like this, this might be the best TV show I've ever watched. But, uh, so I can't place it yet, but it's definitely going on the game of the year list. Um, I think, I think y'all got to play it. Uh, you don't have to have played Alan Wake one. Uh, Stuff is directly connecting to it, but they like explain it as it comes up very easily. Perfect. So like you can essentially assume like they'll be like, oh, Alan Wake went missing in 2010. And then they just refer to things like 13 years ago, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, okay. Anytime they say something like that, it has something to do with. Yeah. Deer Fest. They still got Deer Fest. It's like the 81st Deer Fest or something. I'm so excited. They, They put you in the town at one point and they're just like, hey, 
let's just walk down to the diner and it's one building over and I just walked around the entire town and just like looking at everything being like ooh um, and talking to people so uh, very excited for that uh, the other game I played this week I finished Marvel's Spider-Man 2 it is the second Spider-Man from Marvel uh, they've ne- only made two of these uh, third it- excuse me the third this is of Miles Morales how many inches of venom did you get Oh, phew. 19 inches of Venom. Um, this game was actually, I, I never finished the first game and I played a tiny bit of Miles Morales. Uh, I really enjoyed this. This is the most uh, side stuff I've ever done in a video game uh, that I haven't 100%ed. Um, like, I rarely feel that drive to like do all the side missions and everything. And I did a lot of them. Uh, the one fatal flaw is... I was so ready for the game to wrap up and I was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then I spawned outside of the mission. I was like, what? Uh, And then they added new things to the world and I was like, what? And so at that point I just wanted to finish the game, but I've gone back. Actually, I have marked on my uh, notion board that I have finished Spider-Man two yet. I have gone in twice now to play it and be like, what if I just wrap up like a couple more of these like spots or like, go check this out. Uh, which is very, very surprising. Um, part of that is cause I was waiting for an Alan Wake two patch, but also because I like Spider-Man too. Uh, it's fun. The story is great. I think they do something pretty unique with it. You a hundred percent know what they're setting up for the third game, which is okay in my book. Um, but as, as far as it, I like, I, I think I put this on the game of the year list last week. Um, I don't think it's going to be a number one for me. I don't even think it's going to be a top three, but it was just like a very comfortable play. It's like the culmination Uh of, of them doing everything they've done with Spider-Man and being like, Hey, this is the best version of that game. Um, this is how it's going to be. So I was, I was rather excited uh, about that. Plus all the suits look great. And the noir suit with the low, with the comic book frame rate, the into the spider verse frame weight frame rate on the 12, 12 frames. Yeah. On the noir suit. It just looks so good. <laughs> frame you been, have you been watching too much anime? Well, uh, do we need to wean you off of it? Anyway, no, Ooh, I, frame you know weight? I, I, I've been watching <laughs> the next generation, star Trek, the oh. next generation. I'm on season two now. God, that show's so good. I forgot when like How? shows could just be like, "Hey, yeah. this character's pregnant," and then like yeah. it was an alien. Uh, How how great was it when Tasha Yar died? I was oh. so happy. <laughs> it was. Thank God. I mean, she is my uh, related to me, so I wasn't that happy. But um, it's Denise Crosby, the oh. actress. And she's not actually. For all mankind comes really back. Good next week i think season four that sucks yeah the 10th um i uh no i that episode's wild because they just like kill her in the middle of it <laughs> for no reason and the, the black tar uh, yeah and then they have her like 15 minute uh eulogy from her to each member of the crew i'm like wrap it up let's go <laughs> yeah. um yeah well she had a hard upbringing Oh, wild. I don't want to say it. Do you want to say it? Because she she brings it up a lot. She brings it up a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. Way too Constantly. Much. Hey, you want to grab drinks later? Well, I would if I if I could walk. Uh. <laughs> it's it's bad. Um, it's bad. Anyways, I oh. actually I know how it's become a problem now with um which much like actually oh much like with initial D where I printed out all the TV shows and movies so I could cross them off as I'm going through it. Oh, no. Um, I uh, was looking up. I was like, oh, there's Voyager and Deep Space Nine. Like, what order should I watch these in? When should I? And Enterprise. Uh, and Enterprise I've already watched. I watched that as a kid. Oh. Very good show, okay. Scott Bakula. Count Bakula. Um, but I got very excited. And base, the basic consensus is is just watch Next Generation, then watch Voyager, then watch Deep Space Nine. But, you watch uh, Babylon 5? No, I have not watched Babylon 5. It rocks. I think I kind of want to hit up Sequest after this, because I watched that huh? as a kid with, uh, with the Jaws guy, Roy Schneider. Schneider. Not Rob Schneider. Different. They're brothers. Um, Sequest anyways. is a 
It's, it's not a Spielberg joint, but he exec produced it or something. I want to say something like that. And there were like four. Or of am them? I just thinking of the submarine sandwich store? No, there were like it was secret. There were like f- oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, no, there were like four. F- I want to say two, two to four Sequest TV like distinct TV shows. Um, Executive producer. I think they just like branched them out super quick. Uh, but they're all on Paramount. Uh, plus, and I'm just like, oh, what if I watch these bad TV shows? What if I didn't listen to the man and watch good TV shows? What if I watch my own? Uh, so yeah, that's the games I've been playing. Uh, Spider-Man 2, Alan Wake 2, lots of sequels, and lots to do. Ian Gibson. Hello. Um, I've been playing City Skylines 2. This came out in full release last week, which is surprising because, folks, this Great. this feels like an early access ass game, quite frankly. Uh, did you guys, any of you guys play uh, City Skylines 1? I am not a, a... Besides Islanders, City Builders have not been my jam. Okay, yeah, I'm, that's I'm not fair. A city Builder guy. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a big City Builder either. I'm more of a dabbler. Uh, so, so just as an example, I started City Skylines 2 and I was immediately like, uh, sandbox mode, give me all the money, unlock everything. I don't want to do fucking progression. Just let me fucking draw my town, etc. Um, so yeah, City Skylines 1, very popular, uh, you know, it grew over time, had great mod support, big community around it, etc. But it always felt like it had some problems, some issues, some fiddliness, some wonky logic, etc. City Skylines 2 gets announced, it comes out last week, and folks, um... I booted that game up and it was so laggy in the fucking menu that I was struggling to click buttons. Um, and I have a beefy fucking PC, so I had to I, I got into the options. And as soon as I took it from 4K down to 2560 by 1440, the lag went away. <laughs> so it was like. And then and then I'm like, OK, all right. I know this game has performance issues. So I, I went online, went to NVIDIA and they like recommended these settings, which was basically like medium across the board. I do that. I get into the game. The game's running 40 to 60 frames per second. Looks like fucking ass. Looks like I I had anti-aliasing all the way up and it looked like anti-aliasing was not on at all. So like you turn at, like the, the generic. I, I did. I turned it on, turned it off, turned it back on. It, it was like. Let me see if I, can, if I can explain this in a way that you will, like, get the same visceral <laughs> reaction that I got looking at it. At, like, the default zoom level of, like, your medium zoom, you're looking at your town from above. Um, the railings on the bridge were just, like, a jagged fucking pixelated mess. Like, a just enormous fucking eyesore at every zoom level. <laughs> like, it's just an ugly-ass fucking video game because of how unoptimized it is and because apparently the graphic settings are just doing fucking nothing. <laughs> so... <laughs> So it's wild. Um, like, it's not like the first game looked amazing, but it's to the to the extent that you can't. It, the game is like an eyesore almost. It just looks really bad. Um, so anyways, uh, the actual gameplay itself is pretty much the same as City Skylines one. Now, I know there's people in the chat. There's thousands of people watching. I know some of them have played the first game and they're yelling at me saying this is completely different. But it's pretty much the same. It's like you have these demands and the demands are basically like people want more houses. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to paint a zone and then they're going to magically build houses there. Oh, people want more commercial buildings. People want more retail retail. People want more industrial, you know, and you're just like painting zones, right? Dallas. It just it it's just still feels like it, it's not really a cool. It doesn't feel like a good city builder because as much as I want to be like, I'm going to build the city. I'm having to I'm at the base level. The main gameplay loop is I'm just reacting to this bar chart. And if the green goes up, then that means build more houses. Right. <laughs> and it's not like build more houses as in I'm like picking houses and designing them. It's like, no, I have this street and I just paint the side of the street green and then construction shops show up and build random houses. So it's like it's like a combination of they have these like nebulous demands in place that are and they throw some numbers at you. But I know based on TikTok videos, I've seen that the numbers 
don't actually correlate to anything. They're just magic fucking numbers that they're coming up with. <laughs> Cause like people were doing experiments where they're like, Oh, I have this number that's like supply and demand, like my imports and exports. So I built a single fucking cargo like ship, like a single fucking cargo port. I isolated it from the rest of the city. There are no fucking trucks going to this cargo port. And yet I'm still exporting a hundred things a month. And it's like, these numbers don't make any fucking sense. So, you, so like the main gameplay loop is basically just reacting to a bar chart. And then the other thing, which is just dealing with the city, like designing the city, that's where I want to have my fun. You know, that's where I want to be like, look at this cool, like uh, hilltop neighborhood that I made. Um, one of the biggest complaints with City Skylines 1 was how fiddly it was. It was like, oh, I want to have a street. And it's like, OK, well, if you want it to be a straight road, boom, easy done. But if you want it to have curves, then you have to interact with this really like annoying tool and it's not going to look right. And oh, shit, now you have it like carving 50 meters deep into the plateau. So you have weird fucking cliffs and you've got this house <laughs> half hanging off it. So, OK, well, now I have to like go to the terraforming tools and massage it. And it's super annoying. Mm -hmm. And so one of my big hopes with City Skylines, too, was that they were going to fix that. They didn't. Um, I think I think some of the tools are better, like the streets are better. And uh, honestly, from my experience, the biggest revelation that they have made is in the previous game. If you wanted to do a roundabout, you had to literally like like manually curve the roads to make a roundabout and then alter the traffic pattern manually. And now in this one, you can just like click there's like four roundabout sizes and you just click it on an intersection and it becomes a roundabout. And it's like, that's fucking great. That's the easiest, best tool in the game. Everything else is fiddly as fuck. Like, like if, if you want to do a highway, there is no one click cloverleaf interchange. Like even just like a real basic, this is not optimal, but you just want to get on and off the fucking highway. Just click this and we'll do it for you. No, you have mm -hmm. to draw all the fucking roads. You got to do you got to do the the fucking um, the elevation. It's 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 to the extent where it's almost like a CAD program where they give you so many options and so many details, but it makes it difficult just to fucking do it. So if you want to have a one curve road, right? It is a three click process where you have to click where the road starts and then you click where the corner of the curve should be if it was a square. And mm. then you click out where you want it to end and it's throwing numbers at you the whole time. So if you really wanted to make it perfect, you can. But for me, I'm like, this is a fucking video game. Why can't I just click and drag a fucking curved road? Right. Like, let me just like literally draw the road on the terrain that I want. That's good enough for me. The game engine. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, and it's just and the, the thing is, OK, so look, I'm not a big fan of this game. I'm just sticking around with it. Fans of this game can be mad at me, but I know I'm not wrong because the thing is, about two weeks ago, TikTok discovered that I I like looking at City Skylines videos, apparently. So the algorithm started feeding me this shit yep. and they gave they gave this game out to influencers. So I've been watching people play City Skylines, too, for a couple weeks now. And every single fucking video, even the ones where they're positive about the game, even if they don't realize it, they are making the same fucking complaints that I am. So, so I'll give you a brief example. This one lady was like, was like, hey, people say, you know, City Skylines is too demanding and it's like it requires you to build like a car city. She goes, well, that's not true. And I'll prove it to you. I'm going to build a walkable city. And she like spends two minutes building a walkable city. But there was like three different sections where she was like, OK, I'm going to build like a cute boardwalk here against the river. Um, honestly, it was kind of frustrating. It took me about four hours to do because I kept having to draw the boardwalk and then erase it and then adjust the heights and then erase it and then adjust the heights and adjust the elevation. I'm like, that sounds like a shitty fucking video game if you have to spend four hours manually tweaking a fucking boardwalk because the game won't let you draw it properly. So I, I, I it's just it's just upsetting to me because they have such a cool fucking game core here. It's the space is not crowded at all. City Skylines one by far was was the top tier of that of that space when it was out. And all they had to do was fix these problems that people have had for years with the first game. And they barely fucking did it. And at the same time, they made it run much worse. And it's pretty upsetting. I don't know. Am I out of pocket over here? Can you gerrymander <laughs> to stay in power? <laughs> stay in power. No, honestly, I don't I don't think there's a political element <laughs> at all. You I... could do like um you do certain things where you're like, oh, tax benefit for people who recycle to get them to recycle <laughs> more, but there's not like a really? it's not like a political element. Fuck them. 
Um, I realized I, I um, <clears throat> I like them one more zoomed in, one more zoom level, like Roller Coaster Tycoon. That's fair. Rim World, Dwarf Fortress, and then where it is a city builder, I prefer when cities were smaller, like Banished, uh, that farthest frontier yeah. game, like those types of things. It's always the like, yeah. I always thought SimCity was too. SimCity and like this types of games was too zoomed out. I don't want to deal with all that. I just want to a little yeah. bit more zoomed in. The other thing I was going to say is every time someone brings up City Builder, I remember the SimCity thing of the guys talking about how they had to remove parking oh. lots from the game because it yeah. just the maps would have to be too big to include parking lots for uh, yeah for to, be realistic. to be realistic to be realistic. Fucking honestly, the thing that pisses me off about city skylines too. One of the many things is that everybody fucking parks on the street, so the streets look fucking ugly because everybody keeps parking on the street. And I'm like, you fuckers! I can see your driveway. I can see that you have a garage. Why are you parking on the street in your beautiful neighborhood, you idiots? <laughs> I feel like you're what my neighbors think because my landlord, while the first floor is being renovated. He's like, oh, you can use the driveway if you want to. And we only use it like in emergencies, like if there's nowhere to yeah. park and stuff like that. So I feel like my neighbors now think I'm the asshole who doesn't always park in the driveway. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, it's just sometimes. Yeah. Uh, um, nightmare. Yeah. So anyways, the other game I've been playing Wait, is before you say it, you there's a acronym here. Yes. And I was No, I want to know where it goes. I was trying to figure it out for like a week now. Like I keep being like, what the fuck is this? And all of a sudden what, stuff. what is the acronym for I folks at home? The acronym. Well, I said the acronym like five minutes ago, which is why I know what it is now. But the ac- I don't think you did though. Oh, I don't. The acronym is SJWS. Yeah. So I thought it <clears throat> this whole time I've been trying to come up with things. And then I was like, oh, SJWs. And then I was like, I don't think that's what it is. I think it uh-huh. is something else. So. Yeah. Oh, should I? Should we guess? Should we try to guess what we think it is? Well, I, I think you guessed. Jake, do you have a guess? I have no idea. I have no clue. I'm just, I'm so happy I did it that way because that's the only like bit of enjoyment I will get out of talking <laughs> about this game. Which is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Um, <laughs> oh, it's that you got it backwards. Star Jedi Wars Survivor. Yeah. So now here comes here comes the boring part where I talk about this boring ass video game. Uh, so I played I played like two hours of this game because Jake and Kyle are super high on it. I know it's on the game of the year list, and I got it on sale a couple months ago, and I was finally like, let's. I'm I'm ready. I played the first game. I played a couple hours of the first game. I'm like, this game's getting good reviews, and the, apparently they fixed the performance well enough. And I started playing this game, and uh, I don't like this game. And half of it is, I think there are things that are objectively bad or poor in it, but I think the larger portion of it is subjectively, this game is just boring as fuck to me. Like, it just feels like it's... It's a well done Metroidvania, but in the way that none of it is exceptional. None of it is interesting to me, which is wild because I'm a Star Wars fan and I do enjoy Metroidvanias and the game looks gorgeous in parts. And I don't know, this game's just doing fucking nothing for me. So so my background, I played like the first four, five or six hours of Star Wars. Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen Order, Fallen Order. I said, was it really Star Wars Jedi Fallen? It was I fucking J-W-F-O. game titles, people. Um, Will, you you didn't like the first game either, right? Uh, the first time I played it, I didn't like it. And the second time I played it, I made it further before realizing I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I made it significantly further the second time. <laughs> I um yeah so I uh so I got through the Coruscant section of a Survivor and then I got through what is either the first half or basically the first playthrough of the next area which I believe is called Citizen Kabuto or Kanto whatever that planet is called <laughs> um Koba. so that's like the f- Koba yeah that's like the first two hours probably and more than enough to show me that like 
I okay, let me let me talk about the subjective the objective stuff that I think this game does poorly. And um and then maybe we can melange into just the why don't I like I, this game? I'm sorry, you know? I just don't want to I don't know. Blaze past your giant citizen Kabuto reference. <laughs> that was <laughs> incredible. Um, um so anyways, this game this game's a little weird. I want to hit on the performance real quick because I'm not having the performance issues people were having previously, but this there's an option for this game to run at 30 FPS or to run at 60 FPS. And it feels mm -hmm. like this game is not meant to run at 60 FPS Where'd because you when you it? run it, at, I, I played on the, on, Siri, on the Series X. Okay. Um, so I, I ran the game at 60 FPS, but there are cutscenes and cutscene transitions and like in engine cutscenes and like pre recorded cutscenes that are running at 60, but feels like it feels like motion smooth 30 FPS, <laughs> you know? So it's it's got some weird jank to it. Honestly, the biggest fucking jank and the thing that uh, a, a decent number of games new nowadays and will make me immediately hate your fucking game, uh, looking at you, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is. If if you're in a cutscene, whether it's pre-recorded or in engine, like real time, and you're going to cut between shots, if you cut to a shot, everything should already be fucking loaded. <laughs> <laughs> you should not there. cut to a shot in frame one and frame two, the background loads in and frame four, a character loads in and then frame 10, their their hair loads in. And it just keeps fucking doing that. And it is, and it's wild because the cutscenes aren't that bad. Like this, like there's cool characters. There's some interesting story going on there. It looks good. It just keeps fucking like cut, load, 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 load. Cut, lo, 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 lo. Cut, lo, 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 lo. And it's like, what the fuck is this game doing? I, I don't know. Jake, did you have that experience with this game? I didn't. And I was playing on the Series S. So it's weird to me that, that you'd had that trouble on a more powerful machine. Um, Maybe it's because I have it at the performance where it's trying to do the higher frame rates. Yeah, because I, I don't think on the S, I don't think there was a 60 option. I think it was just 30. Gotcha. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, it's 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 the same thing Horizon Zero Dawn did that pissed me off. I definitely had that problem in Horizon, but um, yeah. I know I, I think like my my experience was pretty solid throughout. I know Kyle might have had a couple of hiccups, but he was on PC. Um, yeah, but I remember but, him yeah. saying his experience was still better than a lot of the people bitching about it because the game does look gorgeous in moments. Mm -hmm. Like like the environment looks great in parts. It's more how how the game how the visuals move in certain times where it'll it'll do some hitching a little bit of blurring and the cutscene loading like i was talking about um my other big complaint with it is i level design i don't think the level design is bad i think they need they need more yellow paint they need more obvious pathing which is a weird thing to say with that. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing to say because it is a Metroidvania, so they're trying to be like, oh, there's multiple paths here. There's not a whole lot of paths. But I swear to you, in that first course on level, I probably at least 30 times would go to a doorway or uh, or an alleyway because there was a light. And I was like, oh, this is the way to go. Or there's something down here. Nope. Dead end. Mm -hmm. Or I'd see like like a stack of crates and I'd be like, oh, I can go up here. And it's like, nope, invisible wall. That's not where you're supposed to go. Or I'd see like grates, like metal grates. And I'd be like, oh, it's the climbing grates that I can mm -hmm. climb. But oh, it's no. It's, yeah. Sorry. Those those have hexagonal holes and the circle holes are the ones you are allowed to climb. Mm -hmm. So like it does not do a good job of just of, of telling you which way to go even just main path way to go and um even worse telling you like climbing wall running services and distinguishing that from the rest of the environment like a lot of times i was trying to do something and then it would take me an attempt to be like oh that's not a wall run wall it's sedimentary rock exposed but it's not the right sedimentary rock for me to wall run on yeah no i definitely had a couple a couple times where I kind of got stuck and just had to like look around and be like, okay, yeah, where, where am I supposed to go? It's also a lot bigger. The environments are a lot bigger than Fallen yeah. Order and a lot less linear. Um, yeah. So I think yeah. it would have helped if they were a little more handholdy in where yeah. you're supposed to actually go. Um, but more on the subjective side, 
Yeah, like like there are good things in this game. I think the characters seem pretty cool. The story starts off strong. We got Stargate's um, Tony Amendola for like yeah. a good chunk. And it's and it's gorgeous and the combat feels good, but it's just not doing it for me, you know? And and I will say one thing, positive or negative, to my personal experience, I did immediately put this fucker on story mode, which is the lowest difficulty. Mm. Um, because playing through that first game and, and the first game wasn't challenging to me, but playing through it and being like, oh, this is enough of a Dark Souls game. And I don't really want that. Like, I'm a Jedi. I just want to fucking slash through people, you know, so I put it on story mode. So I'm not getting a difficulty challenge, but I I am still, you know, getting through the combat and stuff. It's just there is something about this series of games now, two in a row where it's just it's like it's well made. But there's not it's not doing anything fucking special enough to grab me, you know, and I, I and what really frustrates me is not the game. It's that as a critic and as a person who loves to nitpick shit, I can't put my finger on the one, two or three things that I'm like, that's the fucking problem. That's mm. why I don't like it. And so I gave it a solid shot, y'all. But it's just it ain't doing it for me. What was the um, <clears throat> what was the hour count? I don't probably, know, I'd say probably uh, two hours. Like, yeah, two or three hours. He's got my Xbox profile up. I know he does. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Oh, no, I don't, but that's actually a genuinely oh. good idea. I'll pull it up right now. Uh, no, I was just sticking to the under three hours rule. Uh, it's, yeah. the, it's the usual Ian Gibson. I hate this game. Uh, I will say, I know it's not... It's This is maybe a different problem, um, but uh, the story, you're definitely... You've gotten to like the end of the prologue and the story's about to open up if if that yeah. was something that would tantalize you or not but i understand I mean, it was good wanting it, was it good to kick off earlier than that yeah i'll go ahead and i'll spoil the opening which is basically like you're doing this big heist you're with your crew right and by the end of the fucking coruscant like most of your crew's dead and you're just like fuck i just started to like those guys and it's like okay well now you're a survivor because it's down to like you and one other one or one other person you're just like okay it's a strong it's a strong story opening just ain't grabbing me you know uh two hours 14 Fair. minutes sir you spent that yes. game. yes that's uh, enough that's enough time that's enough time folks oh, city skylines four hours 21 minutes you're working on that boardwalk for a while weren't you <laughs> <laughs> how'd it come out Pearly, Purdy, Pur. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it came out okay. I was, I'm, I made some nice uh, interchanges. I did start on the archipelago map, so it's all these little tiny islands. I'm sorry, you and I got to a point. Again? You, archipelago. You Archipelago. Is it not archipelago? Archipelago. Archipelago. That's what it is. Anyways, my archipelago <laughs> map. Archipelago. <laughs> fuck yourself. How about that? <laughs> and I. <laughs> And I got to the point where I was like, where I was like, okay, I want this giant fucking nuclear power plant, but it's big. So I like built a highway bridge over to this other island just to put the nuclear power plant and all the water and sewage treatment processing around it. So it's just like my big, like resident, like utility industrial island. <laughs> and it's completely separate from the city. So nobody's complaining about noise or pollution. I was like, that's cool. That's cool. Um, Better or worse than Starfield? Wait, oh, better. Skylines or Star Wars oh, Jedi better. Survivor? Oh, yeah, uh, which Star one? Wars Jedi Survivor. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What the fuck am I saying? Better. Both. Both are better. So Starfield's just spent, a fucking broken mess of a I'm game. I'm just saying you spent a 10% of the time in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Yeah, but spent, I'm gonna, yeah. I probably have spent less time in Star Wars Jedi Survivor than saying. I did in I Starfield. Just, like, <laughs> It goes it goes back to it it is a very well made game. It's just not hitting for me. Yeah. Starfield it's, is not a well made game, period. It hit for you. No, it didn't. Oh, uh, it was more abusive. Uh, it kept hitting lie. me and kept hitting me. Uh, my my playtime uh I didn't hundred percent Star Wars Jedi Survivor or anything. Uh I did thirty one hours and probably one or two of that was my gameplay capture for the video I made about it. So probably like 29 or 30 hours to complete the story. Yeah. I mean, it only took me about two hours. So to be done with that game, I finished. And I it. saved a heck of a lot of time by just realizing <laughs> it was not for me. 
Um, uh, I was gonna say out of all the weeks that we could skip news, this is the week to not skip the news. Um, we should touch on it briefly, only because we have uh Bungie's number one fan here joining us this week. Um, I don't no destiny. Uh, I don't. Let's sure make you a, have a bunch of tattoo. <laughs> Uh, should I um should I start with my apology? Should you start with your you wrote an apology? I did not write an apology, but I believe last time you were on the podcast, Jake. Huh? I I made an offhand comment and we discussed it briefly. And the hypothetical was is Bungie going to make a Destiny 3? And my flippant take was no because Destiny fans are so used to eating up shit that they will continue to buy and play Destiny 2 no matter how bad it gets. And I I apologize. I was wrong because Apparently. it turns out it turns out you can keep putting out a shitty game for years and years and years, but the moment you do too big of a layoff of beloved people in your industry, your fan base will will turn on you cuz that's Who what knew? Who to thunk? Who knew? Uh, genuinely surprising because normally consumers don't give a shit about the actual workers or producers well it was i well i mean i have a theory but i don't know how much will wants to introduce this or not before uh, we get no too much I, I uh we're good I, I was gonna play the news theme but I, you know what i don't feel like it um <clears throat> no let's get into it bungie this week uh had some some big layoffs uh and they uh went about it in a way that kind of sucked hardcore uh I was pretty sure we were getting news at work of the layoffs, and by getting news, I mean tweets, uh, while they were currently ongoing because the management of Bungie was, like, scheduling meetings during the day, like, one after the other. Gotcha. Uh, which yeah. is a nightmare. Um, I think that's 8% of the staff. Yeah, it was, like, 100-plus um, people or something. Uh, anyways, let's discuss. What do we? What, where do you want to go with this, Jake? Well, so I was going to say to dovetail off Ian's thing, I think this maybe more so than some other, uh, like, been a lot of industry layoffs this year. Um, but I think bungees were a lot of public facing people, where it was like yeah. a lot of the community team, a lot of the support staff, um, two of the composers. So a lot of names that people in the community were familiar with instead of just like, oh, you know, they laid off, you know, their QA team, or they laid off a bunch of, you know, game designers that, you know, were contracted or whatever. Uh, they laid off a lot of people, but there were a lot of kind of public facing folks for then even me, like, or even like the casual Destiny player being like, wait, I know who that is. Why did you lay them off? It seems like they were doing something important. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, crazy. Just crazy stuff. And like, like laying off the marketing manager for Marathon, the lead marketing manager yeah. for Marathon. And I'm like, so yeah. presumably you're going to have to fill that position I again. I well, before Marathon one, comes out, one of the rumors that came out with this was they invited a bunch of Escape from Tarkov players to play Marathon, and all of them pretty much said, "Yo, this game doesn't have it. This game doesn't feel good. It's not right. It's not it." So they may, they are. I feel like safe, safe, safe estimate. They are going to have to slow roll Marathon because they got to do some major rework. Riskier estimate for me, I think Marathon gets canceled. That space is way too crowded, and they don't have it right now. They don't have the special sauce, or they they're, pivot they're thin to like single player. Yeah, or pivot instead of uh, being yeah. a what what a what, uh, yeah what do they call it? It's not a uh, looter shooter. Looter shooter. No, no, uh, it's I'm a, trying to think of the the oh, subgenre uh, zone, zone mul shooters. multiplayer game. Yeah, like end zone extraction shooter. Extraction, extraction. shooter. There That's what go. I was trying yeah. to yeah. come up with. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's my uh, that's my estimate. Is they're going to cancel uh, it or do a do a big big pivot. I'm kind of there with you because like marketing manager is not something like you have a marketing manager if you're making anything. Pretty much, I mean, it could have been they got rid of the marketing manager for marathon and now there's just one bungee marketing manager, but it's still like you would at least have one. Yeah, more sorry, sorry to cut in, but. Something I've experienced in my work, I don't know how, how true this is, but I've been told multiple times through multiple layoffs at my company 
that for an actual layoff like this, the position is removed, that legally the position has to be gone in order for it to be a quote unquote layoff. So it's not like they're firing that person and they're going to bring in another marathon community manager. That position is gone. Yeah. So, yeah. Jake, please, your question. Well, it was like they laid off enough of the community staff where, you know, they do like the This Week at Bungie, or I think they changed it to This Week in Destiny, um, where typically at the end of the the post is what one of the community managers is like, yeah, hey, have a good week. And then it's like whoever wrote that post for that week. But this week's was just the Destiny dev team. And it was also only like three paragraphs oh, yeah. long. Usually they're a lot longer than that. Yeah. Um. So it's like, uh, I mean, even if like, the, the, okay, so maybe they are going to, you know, scrap marathon so they don't need marketing people for it. But you still need community staff if you're having a game yeah. as a service that's that's where i was like and i think I was, now they're down to like one or two people where i was aligning with ian there where they could be severing the jobs because I, ian i believe you're right on the legality of that like the job has to be gone but it's probably for a specific time ra- frame so either they're getting yeah. rid of all of those jobs because they're canceling the game or they're getting rid of all those jobs because they're reworking the game into something else and they'll hire those jobs back up closer yeah. when they're closer to the same time frame out from release. So, Well, and it's also yeah, that like that. barely more than a year ago, they set aside whatever it was like a billion and a half dollars from the sale to Sony to for for staff retention. So it's like where what where did that money go or did they just hire i know they went on a hiring spree right after the sony sale Um, that's that's where the that's where basically the big news out of this was um their sales figures currently running at 45 percent below projections for the year yeah but that seems like that's that's not a that's fucking it's huge but that's, that's not that's, the, it, that's not that's theoretical money. It's not that they actually lost that much money. It's like we want to make this much money and we didn't. So who right, but, no, but you still but you still budget. Money. You budget. You budget for that. So imagine forty five percent of your incoming money. That's a gross generalization. But forty five percent of your incoming money to pay for your staff next year, like you paid for them this year, gone. Seems like a management problem. I don't think it's a management problem. I think it's an everything fucking problem because that that points to you guys are fucking up the game, which is fucking up sales. And now you got to roll down the studio. And that's not just management. That's all through the fucking chain. The problems that Destiny has. It's not it's not a it's not a one problem. It's not an epic. Oh, we bought too many acquisitions, etc. We went on this tangent. We did this. It's like, no, the whole fucking game is crashing down. And that's cutting into sales so drastically that they've had to lay off. Sure. That's well, then you should fault. do what Iwata did and cut your own. Pete Parsons should take a pay cut to retain people. <laughs> I mean, if we had, if everyone was like Iwata, that much, though. <laughs> then yeah. it, it would have been a different world. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I, I think part of my problem with this story is it's, it, it, it does suck the way they did this layoffs and layoffs do suck and game developers in the industry are mistreated. But for me, this story is not them coming along and saying, you know, like the big tech layoffs this past year or two where it was like, oh, everybody else is doing layoffs. Well, we have to do layoffs, too, to show that we can be lean and mean as well, you know, or, you know, hey, management made a mistake and we have to make up for that by laying people off. This is the studio doing a fucking shitty job for several years now, and it finally caught up with them and the sales figures. So to be the asshole here. I'm not saying people deserve to be laid off, but the studio no. was no longer successful enough to support the size of it. And that's everybody's fault. <laughs> you know, it sucks, but that's what happened here. Destiny, they fucked up Destiny enough that people stopped paying them for it and they can't maintain a studio of that size anymore. I think yeah. there were also rumors that like the the next big expansion, which is still on the books as coming out in february was going to be delayed to the summer but they haven't made a formal announcement of that yet yeah yeah i did see however to talk about destiny 3 for a bit um they did say in that announcement thing shit sorry if you give me a second i want to wow 
what's that called? Their bungee hour path forward. I want to read their exact quote here, if I may. Oh, please do. Oh, this oh, is the one that was just the dev team instead of one of the community folks specifically. Yeah. There it is. Okay. To us, quote, this is from Bungie. Quote, to us, the path forward is clear. We need to make the final shape an unforgettable Destiny experience. We need one to build something that will be regarded alongside the best games we've ever made. A fitting culmination that honors the journey we've been on together for the past 10 years. I think that is the end of Destiny 2, and they're moving either to Marathon or Destiny 3. I think they just accidentally said that. Culmination. I mean, that's certainly... It, 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 that would require them backtracking on stuff they said in the Final Shape showcase, which is not obviously impossible for them to do. They could easily just be like, oh, you know, we we you know we thought too far ahead and we can't actually do that. Because they've talked about that they'll just have episodic, episodic content after that. Yeah. Who knows for how long? Because I, 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 I think that's fair. Last, the, big, last big DLC, they continue to put out episodic content, but they're shifting towards other other. Yeah, because I mean, the broad now. community consensus from what I've seen has been like lots of people being like, Final Shape is probably going to be the last time I interact with this game. You know, we it's going to be the conclusion yeah. of the story arc, hopefully. And um, then those of us that have been interested can tap out and those that wish to remain can remain. Um, do you think but yeah, I just don't. Hmm, what? I was going to say, do you think that they've been panicking about that for a while? Like, I'm certain they have, how, especially with yeah. how poorly received Lightfall but was. The I only mean the that they, they accidentally are like gave people the out point in 10 years, 10 years of Destiny 2. And now oh, they're certainly. reaching it and they're like, oh, whoops, we gave all these players the idea that I just have to make it to this point and I'm done to, with Destiny 2 forever. And now they're mm -hmm. like, oh, that point's coming up. How many players are we going to lose? Yeah, because in 2014, it's this big grand, ah, 10 years of storytelling. And then at, at year nine and you don't have something big to follow up. You're like, uh, yeah, what are we going to do? Um, yeah, because I really... I'm worried that this will only result in because the two camps that have sprung up then from the uh this big round of layoffs is a bunch of people refunding their pre-orders of the final shape and then a bunch oh, of people yeah. being like well we still need to like we have to support the devs that are still there trying to make the game better and i just feel like that line is going to keep going down um and like i I really would like Bungie to succeed because I have an emotional investment in the story of the game. But um, I I wouldn't be surprised if they just pull the plug after Final Shape. They're just like that's it. That's that's the my, one. You want my hot take here? The oh, hotter take. Your hot take. I think I think Bungie's gone within five years. Destiny's dead. Gone. Destiny's dead. It still lives, but Destiny's dying. I don't think they can bring it back. Marathon does not look good. Not getting good early reviews. I mean, get good early rumors. And it's a super fucking crowded space. Very competitive. Is I think there, it's going to take them five years, and they're done. Is there a Sony-owned property that could be handed off to them to keep them going? I don't think they would take it. Because they they do have some they have some control as part of that Sony deal, I believe. Do they pivot to being an entertainment company? Because that was part of the whole Sony acquisition was Sony being like, "There's a lot of rich storytelling opportunity that we can manifest in other types of media." No, I could see I could see the Bungie name, mm -hmm. but that whole studio would be Bungie Publishing. It's not like it's not like they would say, okay, you know, rehire, switch out half your people. You're now a movie studio. Mm. They would just take the name. So it, it pains me to say this. But honestly, I don't I don't see Bungie's got to do a huge fucking pivot. Otherwise, they're gone in five years. They've got something else in their incubation team right now that hasn't been announced. I have no idea what it is. Yeah, um, that's got to uh, be that's got to be not even pre-production. That's got to be concept art phase mm -hmm. if it's after marathon. 
Yeah, they're just in a real bad spot right now. Sucks. What are you, what are you saying? Sorry. I'm very busy right now. He's typing. He's doing something. Trying to buy Bungie. It was 1.5 <laughs> bill, I believe. Maybe a couple bill, three or four bill. Four, I thought it was 4.5. I thought it was more than Star Wars. Not come through. That's, that sounds right. We got, I mean, we got Extra Life coming up in three weeks. We could do it. <laughs> Raise Two money weeks. to buy Bungie. <laughs> yeah. We could make it a, we can make it an unlock. <laughs> I'm going to start. The kids, um, the kids, the sick kids get no money. We're buying Bungie. Wait, yeah. anyways, they get money. <laughs> Where, oh. the sick kids. I should be sick. <laughs> uh, good news, though. Good studio news. System era who makes Astroneer has now been acquired by Devolver <gasps> Digital and will be a first party studio. This is this mm-hmm. is great Yay. fucking news, right, folks? What if we play we like Astroneer Devolver. again? It's on Game I, Pass. I, I'd play it with you. I tried to a couple months ago. I think the problem is we already we already <clears throat> played it and beat it. What I if we play Astroneer to 2 back. when it comes out? Yeah, I think this is great because a- Astroneer great game. It's always risky making an indie game. Um, and it's great to see a studio get the support of a bigger publisher arm like Devolver Digital, who really supports unique creative games underneath them. So this just makes me super excited for whatever their next game is. I'm excited. I, I saw someone post the system error thing and I said, I should look up what games they make. And then I never did. So uh, it was exciting. me. I posted it. No, you don't get credit. Sorry. Uh, I noticed when Jake posted it and how uh, great he typed it that um, yeah it's Astroneer that makes sense what are you doing Ian stop what is that who put that on the screen what oh I, I figured I should start putting your bold statements on the screen to hold, hold you <laughs> hold you accountable <laughs> what was the slave my... thing I could add that <laughs> 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 Quit the yeah. quit off the call. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not caught on screen. Sorry, you said that before the stream. <laughs> we have to go back. Yeah, we have to go back, Kate. Um, I think that's going to be it for the news, right? There's nothing else. Nintendo is f- their patents that aren't actually patents. Yeah. Digital Eclipse joined Atari. That's pretty great. Uh, that's cool. They're going to make for them. Pac-Man. Uh, don't show Joe Biden any movies. He will don't, yeah, pass don't policy show him on it. it. Yeah, don't do it. He's uh, so old. And Sega has created its first super game. It's uh, uh, Sonic. Well, let Dream me just say collection. this: Sega, they've teased before about their super game, which is basically multiple cutting edge. Like it's like a giant super A triple A title, two. IP, etc. It is on track. It will be released by March of 2026, and the budget is uh, rumored to be over $800 million, making it the most expensive video game ever made. So many monies. I don't know what the fuck this is going to be from Sega. Bigger than Star Citizen? It's wild. They they ship you an actual Sonic. No, wait. No, wait. I'm sorry. I think Star Citizen is more now. More than $800 million? Yeah, we we (sighs) bashed it the other week. That was my favorite part about having Jimmy and Kyle on that episode is they both play Star Citizen and both hate Star Citizen. Uh, it was a wonderful conversation. And that's when I learned that oh. I had funded it more than 10 years ago. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jake. Star Citizen's at 600 million as of August. Hey, I thought it wasn't that high, but that's still a lot of money. Still high. Still yeah. high. Actually, I'm sorry. I believe that's 600 million for... It's funding by backers. And I believe there is money on top of that that has not been, the amount has not been disclosed. So that is crazy. just the Kickstarter esque raising, 600 million. Wow. Uh, Jake, I, I, did you put this wishlist spotlight here? Do you want to hit that? I did. Yeah. Uh, Mars Tactics, a uh, little real time strategy, or hold on, I'm loading it in. I want to make sure that I'm not saying it wrong. Um, yeah, it's just a little tactic scheme uh, with 3D art by a uh, friend of the channel, R- Russell Sullivan, who we all met in Iceland. Oh! Um, and um, I didn't know he was working on this. 
Yeah, all the little like the little drop ship I know and some of the the building units. I can't remember. I I talked to him briefly about this. I can't remember if it's all the 3D art or most of the 3D art, but definitely some of the 3D art. Um, But um, yeah, I like a little uh, sci-fi tactics game. And it looks very neat. One of these guys has guile hair. It's pretty good. You can, like, the terrain, some of the terrain is destructible, so you can, like, throw a grenade and it'll create a little pit and you can use that for cover. Cool stuff. Levolution. Yeah. This does genuinely look really cool. Um, I'll make sure to... I've been trying to, uh, per Halucha's request, put these games in the description and Mm -hmm. uh, then tweet the uh when i put it out on youtube tweet the developer because i did that with the one of the games i came up with and they like retweeted everything i was like mm. you know as a, i failed to realize as a indie developer they probably like when anyone is talking about their game so. <laughs> the um uh it's it seems like it's getting published by the same publisher of the upcoming upcoming another upcoming wishlist spotlight game falling frontier um but uh yeah. Mars Tactics. Check I'm it excited. out. Oof. Looks cool. Great. Cool. Very <laughs> happy. Yeah, that was fun. Sorry, cool. I, I felt bad. I, I spoke over Jake's line, uh, so I'll get you the un the uninterrupted cut of that, Jake, so you can put it in your video. What? And not have to cut oh. around me. No, you're good. What are you're you talking good. about? Nothing. You were right. speaking, and I started speaking, and I said I shouldn't have spoke. You're talking a... as though I'm not a professional video editor. No, I'm saying our lines will... You don't have the individual audio when you do it. That's what I mean. I can trim you out, baby boy. Don't you're worry. Not, no, I'm going to speak over you. Now, so now when I export it, I'm going to be talking the whole time. I'm just going to put a buzz in the, in the final output. Uh, folks... It. That has been the show this week. Local chat episode 146. Oh, it was right there. Um, I have been your host, Will Crosby. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian Gibson on Twitter at Think Gibson. And you can find Jake Terrio on Twitter at underscore Jake Terrio. Cool. Ian says Bungie is gone in five years, folks. We're going to hold him accountable on that one and all the other dumb shit he says on this show. Uh, We will be back this weekend with some VR games. Those will be super fun, probably on Saturday, I would assume. And then uh, then we'll be back Tuesday with some other crap or whatever. Uh, Look forward to Extra Life in a couple weeks. I'm excited for that. Uh, Subpixelfilms.com is where you can find all our great stuff, and we'll see you all there. Bye.